So I wanted to bring you the story of Fred Rothwell uh, and Thomas Rothwell really, his brother, although I don't know that much about Thomas so I'm still doing a little bit digging because I think there's probably a little bit more of a video to make. But um, I had some bits of footage as I've explained, um, I went to Spain so I can't go out and do filming like I'd not normally want to. So, um, you know, I've used the footage that I've got from various different visits and stuff. But this particular grave, I went to visit it um, a few weeks ago and it caught my eye um, for two reasons. Um, one, um, the stones are beautiful and two, there's two Rothwell names side by side. So I thought, you know what, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and look into that and, and, and find out what they're all about. I had no idea. Um, you know, who they were or, or what they'd done or, or anything like that or even, anyway, I'll just get on with the story. So, um, Fred Rothwell uh, is the one I've got the most information on, so I'm going to base most of the story on, on him, but uh, him and his brother and two of their um, two of their business partners, which I'll be featuring, I'll be featuring the business partners in another video, uh, they formed this company in Oldham called Eclipse. Now, it started out as um, Eclipse Sewing Machines. Now, it did have their surnames as a company in it originally, um, but then they changed it not long after that to Eclipse. Now, Eclipse was designed to eclipse all others. Uh, that was the slogan that they had behind the company. And they started manufacturing sewing machines. And they claimed that their sewing machine was fantastic because you could sew this way, that way, and the other way, and there wouldn't be a problem. Um, and when I looked into it, sewing machines were big business in Oldham. There was loads and loads and loads of firms that manufactured these sewing machines, you know, to make clothing, basically. Um, and actually, um, Fred himself was trained at a company called Bradbury & Co. Um, they were sewing machine manufacturers, and that's where we learned his trade. Anyway, company was trading for a number of years and um, then they decided that they were going to start making motorcycles so the motorcycles that they made um, you know they look like a big BMX I think um, you know and they had, a, they had a motor that was strapped to the bottom and that motor was able to do two, two brake horsepower uh, so yeah uh, considering what you had at the time was either you know um, a pedal bike or a uh, horse and cart, you know, um, I imagine that was that was quite a luxury. So they, they, they manufactured them. Anyway, then um, they decided that they were going to move into cars. So what they did is they uh, employed an engineer from Rolls-Royce, right? In 1904, they produced their first ever vehicle. Now, I believe that was running at 10 brake horsepower. Um, it was... Uh, I think it was a two-stroke or a four, I'll have to check whether it was a four-stroke engine, but in any event, it was, um, you know, it was it was a new car, it was old and manufactured, um, and it was a fantastic new thing, I mean, who knew that they used to manufacture cars in old, and maybe some people did, I, I didn't have an absolute clue. Um, so yeah, the business itself, it traded... Um, it traded, first of all, from Roscoe Street in Oldham, which is just behind the Oldham Cron, um, and then they traded from Gas Street. Now, Gas Street just runs behind Roscoe Street down the bottom. Uh, and if you're familiar, there was a bridge, was a bridge, that, that basically went over the bypass in Oldham to join over in Gloddick, um, bridge that had been there for over 100 years. They've recently taken that bridge down. It also featured in a film with a kind of loving. I put it in one of my previous videos, the Mumps and Shaw Road video. If you watch that, you'll be able to see it. Um, but yeah, um, that's where they were, and then they, they just quickly outgrew every business, every business premises that were in, and they ended up um, just off uh, a side road off Rochdale Road, um, and that's where they stayed. So uh, as I said, 1904, they brought this vehicle out, and they produced they, they produced hundreds of cars a year um, up until um, 1910, when they were bringing out 25 brake horsepower uh, cars. Now, in comparison, I had I think my their little cars only about 80 brake, something like that. So when you consider over 115 years later, I've only got a car that's doing 80 brake on modern roads to be doing 25 on, you know, on, 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 on well, I suppose really you couldn't go that fast on Victorian roads because they're all pe pebbles anyway, weren't they? Cobbles, especially around Oldham. But I just thought that was a fantastic, really, really fantastic um, fact and I had, literally had no clue. And the other exciting thing is that um, one of their cars, I believe, is actually on um, display, excuse me, 
one of the cars is actually on display in um, Oldham Gallery and apparently uh, this car was donated to Oldham Gallery <coughs> which I think is really really um, really kind by one of the Rothwell family um, I don't know when that was but the car's fully restored I think the story behind the car was <coughs> the story behind the car was that years ago after, there was a guy who'd, who'd bought the car down in Birmingham I think it was yeah I think it was Birmingham and he was um, it was a grocer and he bought the vehicle and he loved it and I think he had a couple of cars off Rothwell's to be fair and um, his family, it, what, what happened was the government I think in 1920 decided that they were going to start implementing um, costs to, uh, for people to drive on the roads, you know, to maintain the roads or whatever. Made it, he decided it was too much and literally there was no point in using the car because it was costing too much. So what he did, he put it away in the garage and he stored it for the rest of his life. And then when he died, I believe uh, one of his family members got it and then I think one of the Rothwell uh, family members managed to track it down. The vehicle was fully restored but it was mint anyway because it had been in the garage for donkey's years. Um, and then he gave it to the Oldham Gallery. I believe that's the story. Um, if anyone can put me right on that, as, as always, please feel free to do so. But... But yeah, so when the Oldham Gallery opens, we're definitely going to go and have a look at that. In fact, when the gallery opens, I've got a lot of things I need to look at because what I've discovered over the time of doing these types of videos, there's loads of stuff in there that, you know, that I need to go and look at um, and definitely feature on the channel. So I'll be doing that. Um, but anyway, yeah, getting back to Fred and his uh, brother Thomas. So I checked out where Fred lived. I stalked him <laughs> and he used to live on Edward Street. In Werneth. Now, if you go up there now, Edward Street, literally, the top of it, you've got uh, you've got the funeral home, which is on the right hand side, and then you go down, and you've got a few houses, but then you've got a park. Now, that park there was actually dedicated by uh, a member of the Lee's family um, in the memory of his father, I believe, and the the, the park was um, designed not as a park, but as a, as a so what you've got across the road from there now is the big white building, which is the Oldham Probation Service. But actually, that that building um, was the home of um, of Fred. So that's where he lived, and that's where he died before he was um, finally taken to the resting place, which is um, which is Tenant Cemetery. Now his brother Thomas, he lived in Delft, and his house was called Stoneswood. Uh, I'll put the name of Fred's, Fred's house, it's got a name, I think it's Wilton Place or Wilton House, I'll put the name in, uh, I think it's still got that name now, I think that's what they refer to it to, uh, the people that work at the, um, you know, at the probation, um, but yeah, his brother Thomas, he um, he lived up Delft and his house was called Stoneswood, now I'm putting the video in so you'll be able to see that, Stoneswood nowadays is, um, it's been turned into a beautiful car I and mean, you can tell like, there's a lot of money in there, you know, that's, it's a fairly private exclusive uh, type of home and um, yeah so Stoneswood itself uh, is, is a beautiful house and what I really like about it is if you look at it you can imagine that that's exactly what it looked like all them years ago it doesn't look like it's changed apart from maybe they've changed the front door or something you know um, but yeah uh, Thomas died before Fred and he was buried in Chadderton Cemetery and then I think it was a year later that Fred uh, passed away and then he was buried. His wife joined him uh, 11 years later when she passed away. Now the firm itself, um, the firm itself, I'm pretty sure you know that the firm closed not long after she died. So maybe she ran the business maybe with uh, you know family member up until she died and then it was all disbanded. Uh, as I said, the other people, Shepherd and Hurst, I believe it was, was the other people that that were with, uh, that was in the company with them originally. Um, Hurst is a really good story. I'll be definitely featuring him. And uh, he was actually born in Failsworth. And Shepherd, I'm just doing a little bit of research on him. I'm struggling to find some information, but I definitely will find some. But I just wanted to tell you the story of how Oldmers, um, at one time, in 1904, manufactured, uh, designed, should I say, uh, developed and manufactured 
uh, motor cars uh, in vast quantities. I think they were selling up to 650 units a year, which is two a day. Sounds a lot, that, doesn't it, really? But um, by all accounts, that's what they did. Um, so, yeah, a uh, quick video today. Um, as I said, I'll be out of isolation in a couple of days, so then I'll be able to go out and do uh, a few videos. I've got loads of good, I've got loads of good ideas of stuff that I want to do, so um, I think Sunday I'm going to hit the road and definitely uh, do a few bits. But I've also got to do loads in the house as well, because I'm putting that up for sale next week. I've still got loads of decorating and I hate it. Um, but yeah, that's me waffling on. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, um, come back for the next one. Uh, I'm not going to say the subscribe thing because I hate that, but... <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's it. I will upload this now and uh, look forward to all of your comments and I'll see you in the next one.